A ball is a three-dimensional object. It has height from the bottom to the top. It has width from one side to another. And it has depth from the front to the back. You can feel it. You can touch it. You can smell it. You can eat it. Well, maybe not. And you can throw it up in the air and catch it. It is a three-dimensional object within a three-dimensional space of height, width and depth. Now, you cannot make the ball go flat on a piece of paper, not even with a hammer. <coughs> now, a piece of paper is also a three-dimensional object. It kind of floats around in space. You can feel it. You can touch it. Uh, you can eat it. Uh, <laughs> you wouldn't want to. It has height from the bottom to the top. It has width from one side to another. And it does have depth. It doesn't have much depth. It is very, very thin. And because of that, we generally think of a piece of paper as being a surface. We generally think of it as being two-dimensional surface of just height and width. Anything you draw onto the surface of a piece of paper will be a two-dimensional or 2D drawing. Any drawing that looks 3D is still a two-dimensional drawing. We can create the illusion of 3D by creating the illusion of depth. Height goes from top to bottom. Width goes from side to side. And depth seems to go from front to back. But really, it is going at an angle to the directions of height and depth. You can choose any angle you like. The shallower the angle, the flatter the object seems to lie on the imaginary floor. This is a circle. And this is a ball. They look the same. But if we add some detail to the ball, it begins to look real. Almost as if you could reach out and pick it up off the page. Both are two-dimensional drawings, but the ball is a three-dimensional representational drawing. With light and shade, the human eye can be easily tricked into thinking a drawing is a three-dimensional object. Some drawings are so real you feel you could reach out and pick them up off the page. And optical illusions make what is impossible in three dimensions appear to be possible in two dimensions. Either way, they are still two-dimensional drawings representing three dimensions. You can make a two-dimensional drawing of a vase of flowers sideways on. And this might be used by a florist on their shop sign. A three-dimensional representation of a vase of flowers can be done in many different styles. So what about the fourth dimension? Can that be brought into drawing? Well, I think that's really one for the philosophers to argue about until the end of time, because time is generally thought about as being the fourth dimension. We could call the length of time it takes to make the drawing. You could call that the fourth dimension of the drawing. Uh, or you could, like my little friend here, um, you could have an animation which puts a series of drawings together over time to create the effect of movement. But as I say, I think that's really one for the philosophers.